Imagine you're at a birthday party and you're asked to cut the cake for all of your friends. What's the fairest way to cut it to make sure everyone is happy with their piece? This might sound like a simple question, but it took computer scientists over 70 years to solve. The algorithm is insanely complex. To share between five people, it can take more cuts than the number of atoms in the universe. Known as the cake cutting problem, it's famous in a branch of computer science called fair division, which explores algorithms for mathematical fairness. So if you were never good at sharing, don't feel bad. Turns out sharing is mathematically difficult. So what is the fairest way to cut a cake? Why is it so complicated and why do we care? Well, cake is actually a metaphor for any divisible limited resource, a plot of land, advertisement space, or broadcast time. Imagine you could plug any of these situations into a computer, run an algorithm, and it'd spit out a division so that everyone was happy. Think of all the fights and lawsuits that could be avoided. Your first thought might be, can't we just cut the cake into as many pieces as there are people? But what if the cake looks like this? People value different pieces differently. Imagine dividing up a plot of land based purely on space. Someone would definitely be salty. How do you take into account all these preferences? And how do you handle things when the number of people gets huge? Actually, it doesn't even need to be that huge. Sharing a cake fairly among just four people took 70 years to solve. To see why, let's get familiar with what a mathematical algorithm for fairness even looks like. Basically, we want a step-by-step -step procedure that when we get to the end of the procedure, everybody has a piece of cake they consider fair. For two people, there's an algorithm as old as time. It was even mentioned in the Bible. It's called cut and choose. And it goes like this. Alex and Billy want to share a cake fairly. We make Alex the cutter, and his job is to cut the cake into what he thinks are two equally valuable pieces. Alex really likes strawberries and cuts the cake like this. To Alex, these two pieces are equal in value. We're not talking about the literal sizes of the pieces, but rather how the players value them. Size is just one factor among many. Now Billy chooses the piece she likes best. Billy likes chocolate frosting, so to her, this piece is the better one. Alex gets the remaining piece. Billy is happy because she thinks she got the best piece, and Alex is happy because he thinks he got a piece equal in value to Billy's. The cut and choose algorithm is exactly what we want in a fairness algorithm. It will always work no matter who cuts first or how the players value the pieces of cake. Oh look, here's Charlie. Will cut and choose work for three people? Let's see. Alex cuts the cake into what he thinks are three equally valuable pieces. In the lucky situation, Billy and Charlie choose different pieces. Alex gets the remaining piece and everyone is happy. But what if Billy and Charlie both want the same piece? The cut and choose protocol doesn't have a way to deal with this conflict, and so it only works for two people. This is a huge drawback for anyone with more than one friend. So what can we do? Well, we can ask ourselves, what does it mean to be fair? We all have some intuitive notion, but to come up with an algorithm for fairness, we need to formulate it mathematically. In the 1940s, these two guys had the idea of proportionality, that everyone feels like they got at least their proportion of the cake. So if there are three players, they each feel like they got at least one third of the cake. They came up with an algorithm to guarantee proportionality for any number of players. It's called the last diminisher protocol. You'll see why in a sec. Alex cuts what he thinks is exactly one third of the cake for himself. Then Billy examines the piece. If she thinks it's worth exactly equal to or less than one third, she passes the piece along unchanged. If she thinks it's worth more than one third, well, that's a problem. Billy wants to guarantee that she gets at least one third of the whole cake. And if she thinks this piece is worth more than one third, that means she thinks there are less than two thirds left. Sharing less than two thirds of cake between two people does not guarantee she'll get at least one third. To resolve this, Billy trims the piece to what she believes to be exactly one third of the cake and lays claim to the piece. The excess trimming is added back to the cake. We repeat the process with Charlie. Charlie examines the piece and decides it's worth less than one third of the cake, so he passes on it. Billy, who is the last diminisher of the piece, gets to keep it. We now repeat the process with the remaining players and cake. Alex trims what he considers to be one third of the whole cake and Charlie examines the piece. He thinks the piece is less than one third of the whole cake. Alex gets the piece and Charlie takes the remaining piece. Everyone thinks they got at least one third of the cake, but is it fair? Billy doesn't think so. She thinks Alex got a better piece than her. 
So even though everyone got their fair share, proportionality doesn't meet our intuitive notion of fairness. Not only do we need to get our fair share of the cake, we also need that nobody else gets a better piece than us. Computer scientists call this envy freeness. It means that no one envies another person's piece of cake, and given the opportunity, no one would swap their piece with anyone else's. Envy freeness is generally considered to capture the way we think about fairness. So the cake cutting problem is really about finding an envy free algorithm for any number of people. But an envy free algorithm for just three people wouldn't appear for another 16 years. It was found independently by these two guys. It's called the Selfridge Conway Protocol. I'll show you the protocol, don't worry. But first, I ate a lot of cake in the process of making this video and have been basically overeating and under-exercising for the entire holiday period. But the start of a new year is the perfect time to reset and build healthy habits. If you're looking to kickstart your year on the right foot, let me introduce you to my co-pilot coach, Kaylin. We all know we should exercise regularly. I know that when I do, I have more energy, better memory, and I'm just less stressed but I've always had a hard time sticking to a routine. There's always an excuse. I don't have time. I'm too tired. I don't have the right equipment. I don't know what exercises to do, or I just get bored of the same workout. With Kaylin, I've been able to stick to three workouts a week consecutively for five weeks now. I told Kaylin what my goals were, and she immediately created an exercise program tailor-made for me. Don't have the right equipment? Here are exercises you don't need equipment for. Want to build core strength? Do these exercises. If I ever forgot to do a workout, which was frequently because building a new habit is hard, Coach Kaylin would be right there keeping me accountable and on track. The Copilot app allows me to be in contact with Kaylin whenever I want through the in-app messaging feature and give feedback on all my workouts. I loved the flexibility of being able to work out anywhere. It's like having a personal trainer, but at a fraction of the cost. The transformation in my energy levels, stress management, and overall strength has been incredible. So if you're like me and you struggle to fit fitness into your busy life, now is the perfect time to give Copilot a try. They're offering a 14 day free trial and 20% off your first month for Up and Adam viewers if you sign up before February 1st. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. Let's make this year the year we stick to our fitness goals. All right, back to the video. The Selfridge Conway Protocol, sharing a cake in an envy free way between three people. Alex cuts the cake into what he thinks are three equally valuable pieces. In the interesting case, Billy and Charlie both want the same piece. Here, Billy trims her favorite piece to the value of her second favorite piece. Say she values this piece as second best. Now Billy thinks this piece and this piece are equal. We put the residue to the side for now. Now there are two pieces Billy would be happy with, and there are two pieces Alex would be happy with. Remember that Alex thought all pieces were equal to begin with, and these are two full pieces. We then ask Charlie to choose his favorite piece. If he chooses this piece, Billy can still get this piece and Alex gets this piece. If Charlie chooses this piece, Billy can take this piece and Alex gets this piece. And if Charlie chooses this piece, Billy can take this piece and Alex gets this piece. All possible options result in no one being envious. Say that Charlie chooses this piece, so Billy gets this piece and Alex gets this piece. Here we have an envy free division of most of the cake, but obviously we're not letting any cake go to waste. We need to deal with the residue. You might be thinking, what's to stop this situation potentially happening over and over again with the residue just getting smaller and smaller but never reaching zero? Well, now we have a condition that we didn't have to start with. Alex would be happy to give Billy all of the residue. Remember all of the residue came from Billy's piece and Alex thought all initial pieces were equal. In cake cutting talk, this is called domination. As Alex is happy to give all of the residue to Billy, Alex dominates Billy. Remember this idea, cause it's gonna be important later. But we do still need to divide the residue as Charlie would be envious if Billy got all the residue. There's another important point. The cutter is always happy to let the other players choose before them. They think they cut all the pieces equally, so they really don't mind which one they get as long as it's a full piece. So if we make Charlie the cutter, Charlie is happy to let Alex and Billy choose before him. And because Alex is happy to give Billy all the residue anyway, he's happy to let Billy choose before him. This procedure is nice. It guarantees envy freeness in all cases, but it only works for three players. 
This is where the cake cutting problem stood for 40 years. No one could figure out an NB3 algorithm for four or more players. Until 2016, when two computer scientists, Harris Aziz and Simon McKenzie, first came up with a protocol for NB Freeness for four players, and then the very next year, a protocol for any number of players, finally putting the 70 year math problem to rest. To appreciate the ingenuity of the final algorithm, we need to understand why is the cake cutting problem so difficult in the first place? There are a lot of factors that make it complicated. The fact that players can have insanely complicated preferences for one. But the main thing that makes the problem difficult is the interactive entangled nature of it. All of the players are potentially affected by every single move. This makes it very difficult to know when any progress is being made. What do I mean by that? Take a very simple algorithm, bubble sort. This algorithm sorts a list of numbers from lowest to highest. It looks at two adjacent numbers, compares them, and puts the lowest one on the left and the highest one on the right. It keeps going through the list until all the numbers are sorted. There's a clear goal, sort the numbers, and each step moves you closer to the goal. You can see by the progress bar that it's very easy to see when we're close to completion. No move is going to undo any progress. Compare this to the cake cutting problem. We could have nine out of 10 people happy with their pieces of cake, and then get envious when the 10th person gets their piece of cake, unraveling the whole thing. It's not clear whether having nine people satisfied like this is closer to having 10 people satisfied than having just one person satisfied, if progress can just be undone at any time in unpredictable ways. If we don't know when we're making progress, it's very difficult to know what direction to head in. Aziz and McKenzie solved this problem by providing a clear direction to head in through the use of dominations. Remember when Alex dominated Billy? Imagine we also got Alex to dominate Charlie. This means Alex can give either Billy or Charlie all the residue without becoming envious. He couldn't care less how they divide it up between themselves. He's happy with his piece of cake and no longer dependent on the other players. We can remove him from the problem. This is tangible progress that can't be undone. No matter what we do with the residue, it's not going to undo the fact that Alex is happy with his piece of cake. The Aziz McKenzie protocol extends this strategy to any number of players by slowly getting players to dominate other players and removing them from the problem. We whittle the problem down until we have just two players and then run, cut and choose. So how do we get players to dominate other players? Well, that's what these 34 pages are devoted to. In the worst case, it can take n to the 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 n steps, where n is the number of players. Some of you might be thinking, this is a lot of work for something that isn't practical. But often, showing that something is possible is just the first step. Before this solution, no one knew whether sharing a cake fairly in an envy free way was even possible. Computer scientists are working on bringing the number of steps down, which wouldn't even have been possible if not for this result. Rather than make a video that lasts till the heat death of the universe, I'll explain how it works for three players so you can get the general idea of the steps involved. We're going to take the most difficult case so you can see all the techniques in action. So if at any point you're asking yourself, why am I making the players choose like that? It's because I chose the case that best demonstrates the ideas that lead to domination. All right, so Alex cuts the cake into what he thinks are three equal pieces. Billy and Charlie both want the same piece. This time, Billy and Charlie both place trims on their favorite piece to make it equal to their second favorite piece. They both value this piece as second best. Billy places a trim on her favorite piece to the value of her second favorite piece, then Charlie does the same. Billy thinks these two pieces of cake are equal, and Charlie thinks these two pieces of cake are equal. Just like in Last Diminisher, whoever trimmed more of the piece wins it, in this case, Billy. But rather than give her up to her trim, we can give it up to Charlie's trim. Billy now thinks she has some bonus, as she got more than what she would have been happy with. Charlie's cool with this, as he thinks Billy's piece is equal to his second favorite piece. Remember, players just don't want other players to have a better piece than them. They're fine with them having an equally good piece. We put the residue to the side. Now Charlie chooses this piece and Alex gets the last piece. This is an envy free allocation of most of the cake. Once again, we have Alex dominating Billy, as all the residue came from her piece. Now we want Alex to dominate Charlie, so that we can get rid of Alex and run cut and choose on Billy and Charlie. 
To do this, we run the same protocol on the residue. Alex cuts the residue into what he thinks are three equally valuable pieces. For argument's sake, everybody has the exact same preferences again. Billy and Charlie both think this is the best piece, and this is the second best piece. They both trim their favourite piece to the value of their second favourite piece, and Billy wins it again. We put the residue of the residue to the side. Charlie chooses this piece for himself, and Alex gets this piece. Here we have Alex dominating Billy again, as again the residue of the residue came from her piece. To get Alex to dominate Charlie, we're going to do something crazy. We're going to get the players to swap cake. Let's take a look at what Billy and Charlie are thinking. Charlie thinks that both of his pieces are equal to both of Billy's pieces, while Billy thinks both of her pieces are better than both of Charlie's pieces. How much better? Well, exactly this much better. Two bonuses better. We ask Billy which piece of hers does she think has a bigger bonus, and she says this piece. So we make her swap the other piece with Charlie's corresponding piece. Charlie is of course happy with this as he thought those pieces were equal. Is Billy happy? It's true that she's downgraded in cake, but overall she still thinks she has more cake than Charlie, so she's cool with the swap. Now let's reassess the situation. Charlie now has the piece that the residue of the residue came from, so Alex would be happy to give Charlie all the remaining residue. He'd also be happy to give Billy all the remaining residue, as it came from the initial piece of residue, which came from her piece. Alex now dominates both Billy and Charlie. We can remove him and run cut and choose on the remaining residue with Billy and Charlie. This swapping cake idea is the novel idea that allows us to control the dominations. Now all that's left to do is get the number of cuts down to something that'll take less than the age of the universe to share. But the main takeaway of this video is, next time you're at a party, you'll know how to cut the cake fairly for all your friends. Never mind that you might get kicked out of the party. And if you want to have your cake and eat it too, remember to sign up to Copilot for a 14 day free trial and 20% off your first month if you join before February 1st. Follow the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to make this the year you stick to your fitness goals. Bye!